inside the social medias, we got the social medias. You got the Facebooks, we got the Facebooks. You got the Twitters, we got the Tweeters. We got the uh, Instagrams, we don't really use that one too much, but you know, we're on there too. If there's something else, we probably got it. You can find them all in the description at the bottom. Welcome to Heat Wave! We're back with another episode, episode 15. I'm joined with the beautiful Brittany Saturn. Brittany Saturn! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Jer Smith. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, it's the Hot Touchison. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you just burp that out. <laughs> I am drinking some Mountain Dew. I have to figure out how to give a good gut roll. Ooh, Shit, I forgot to get a drink. Like this acid oh, well. reflux thing going on. Cranberry. Yeah, I'm going to share some of your cranberry probably. <laughs> um, so we're going to do something a little different with the podcast because uh, we're going to be like this for a little bit. So for what does um, like this mean? I can't like see this what meaning. Gesturing. We're going to be uh, in quarantine. <laughs> you guys are going to be home. We're going to be here. We're not going to get to talk to each other as much as we usually do. We're going to be on set. <laughs> on set. <laughs> and um, what basically what I'd like to do with this first part is just talk about how we're all doing. See how we're holding up with quarantine. Let's and go to that way we don't make weather. any. Yeah, that's right. That way we don't make any damn segments about it. <laughs> Uh, well, still adjusting to this uh, not being a cage free podcast, uh, but. <laughs> this is a free range podcast. <laughs> I actually got out yesterday and started walking, Ooh. so I guess technically that's true. Though. That's nice. Fancy. How do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel after that? Uh, okay, I guess. Um, <laughs> like... <laughs> Outside, it was a cruel and evil mistress. <laughs> well, well, here's the, the stupid thing is that. I've lived here in my neighborhood for like 10 years and mm-hmm. I've not actually gone out and walked through it. Yeah. So it's just like, wow, these are some really cool that's, houses. Well, that's and why I your really legs like have how- atrophied. <laughs> yeah, yes. Hutch, yeah. Hutch how, is, how is it that I have walked through your neighborhood several times in the three <laughs> years I lived there, but you are just now walking through like your neighborhood and you've lived there for a decade? Because he's busy. I'm, he's a busy man. I'm, yeah. I'm that's right. Busy man, and I'm really that lazy. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I'm not even like scolding you. I'm impressed. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then I took a drive because got to keep that car battery charged. That's right. Case. That is true. Um, Brittany and I went to the park actually, and then got scared for our lives. Yeah. And then <laughs> came home and Brittany started making masks. <laughs> So we went to the art park. Um, the art park? And at first it was fine. We got there. There was like nobody there, hardly. There was people there, but they were really far away. And we looked up, like we came to a fork in the road. We had to make a decision to go left or right. We looked to the right and there was a shit ton of people up that way. So we went to the left where there was nobody. And then all of those people who were at the top came down where we were. Mm-hmm. And we were like, okay, it's time to go because there's too many fuckos next to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um Nobody keeping their damn distance. Yeah, and I'm like, come on. Like, some people were really good about keeping their distance, and some people were, like, way too close. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? (laughs) Why are you doing this to me? Um, So then I came home, and I saw, like, a Facebook article about how the CDC is suggesting that if you go out at all, wear cloth masks. Um, And I actually have a lot of extra fabric uh, in the closet, so I started making cloth masks. Um, and I considered selling them and I looked at like, cause Etsy actually sent an email out and was like, Hey, if you make cloth masks, now's the time to put them up. Cause there's a high demand for them on Etsy. So I searched to see like how much people were selling them for. And people are selling a single mask for like 10 to $30 each. It's Jesus. insane. Oh, yep. fuck. And I said, fuck that shit. I'm just going to give them away to friends and family. So I posted a, a thing on Facebook and asked like, if anybody is interested, I'll ship them to you. But if you just pay me like three or four dollars to cover postage it's you know no big deal Mm. uh so i have had a ton of requests i think i'm up to like 30 masks uh that i have to make now so that's what i've been doing keeping myself super busy my mother is doing a similar thing i think it helps like in this weird time we're all trying to do shit that makes us feel like we still have agency and autonomy and uh, like control over our lives and I, I yeah I think that's a super easy super simple way to one help people because <laughs> ain't nobody buying masks <laughs> um but also you know feel good 
Yeah, it makes me feel like I'm actually able to do something. Because we're in a time where there's nothing we can really do. Um, but kind of wait it out. So I'm like, this is making me feel proactive at least. So. Yeah. It's been helping with us not go crazy, which we definitely have been going a little <laughs> bit crazy. Yeah. It's been helping us with the not go crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Very valuable. To, uh, it, it's nice to stay sane somewhat, at least a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you, Jairus? What have you been up to? My job? No. Um, yeah, we- <laughs> wow, that joke came back. <laughs> yeah, it did. Um, it's a classic. Callbacks. Uh, now it's becoming a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, we, <laughs> we did some grocery shopping yesterday just to make sure that we're stocked up. But I have now like eight pounds of frozen or a no, like 16 pounds of frozen chicken. Nice. So I got that Costco Perfect. run and they had chicken thighs. Um, yeah, I mean, we're just we're hanging out trying to find ways to make ourselves happy and less miserable. Thankfully, it's been nice outside. Um, so we've been sitting on the porch and watching people walk their dogs by. Which is really oh, man. nice. I, I have to admit, I'm really jealous about the porch. Yeah. That's like, good. Brittany and I do not have an outside space yeah. here at the house. Yeah. So we're if we're outside, we are with people. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had some new neighbors move in and they like to fight a lot in the parking lot. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> yep. So it's pretty uncomfortable to be outside, and then they start fighting. And you're just like, okay, cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've I'll been go back in the house. Thanks. I've been actively looking for new apartments, and the best thing is there's so many available now. Yeah. It's like our other two neighbors are perfect, but um, the one new neighbor that moved in um, is not rowdy. And, and they have so many cars too. Yeah, they have so many cars. They clog up a parking lot, and I also found a whole bagel in the parking lot <laughs> <laughs> that I think they dropped. <laughs> That's so actually, that was me. That was assholes and also <laughs> bagel criminals. Yeah, yes. bagel criminals. So, oh just god, that's not, how I'm going to refer to them from here on not out. Pleased. <laughs> uh, excuse me, citizens. That is a perfectly good bagel that you just abandoned. Yeah, it had a bagel <laughs> wife. It had bagel children. They're waiting at home for this bagel. <laughs> It's never coming home now. <laughs> you deprived it of a, it of a glorious death. <laughs> <laughs> because well, as we all gl- know, the most glorious death that a bagel can have is to be eaten. Yeah, exactly. I'm about to eat a bagel in a minute. Mm. Speaking of glorious death, Jairus, what are we talking about today? Glorious deaths. All right. <laughs> you have 15 minutes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, I think I would like to die by electing an animal from Animal Crossing as president. So my okay. question is, what animal from Animal Crossing, not just a uh, tiger, like you can't just say tiger, <laughs> um, what animal from Animal Crossing would you vote for? If they all ran for president, Sonic, Hutch, you can really fired. move. Bounce him off. Bounce him off the podcast. Kick him out of the call. Hutch is done. Hutch, you're cut off. Go walk around your fucking. Uh, he meets Mabel. Mabel's oh. Sonic's wife. Oh. Okay. Oh, is that like some weird fan fiction that you've written? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, no. She's a blue hedgehog. Uh. <laughs> no, um, I can hear how much Brittany hates this. <laughs> oh yeah, she's really in pain right now. I feel like honestly, like everybody hates him, but Nook is very smart, and I think Nook would make a good president. <laughs> I I think have kind of like come around on Tom Nook. Uh, okay. Someone on Twitter framed it really well. Uh, highlighting that he is giving zero interest loans mm-hmm. to people. He is he is creating an economy. Now it's mm. going to turn into an Andrew Ryan underwater nightmare eventually, probably. Oh, eventually, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe Nook isn't the worst. I'd vote for Kid Cat just because he's the coolest, and that's what you, you want know, in a president. You want them to be cool. <laughs> I mean, if that's we're going true. for cool, we got to go KK Slider. 
I, no, KK Slider is too much of a free hippie for that. Exactly. He would not be. Well, held yeah, but down at least he's job. not. <laughs> at least he's not fucking Harv. I would pick Stitches. St- mm. <laughs> <laughs> Stitches has a really simple uh, candidacy. I want to eat candy. Let's all eat candy. <laughs> That's yeah. his candidacy. I, I mean, that's, that, that's the platform I can get on on the floor. Simple, direct, straightforward, good sound bites, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think the face of Stitches might freak a few people out, so I don't yeah. know. He what. does have sort of a haunted doll look. To him. <laughs> he is also parts. <laughs> <laughs> but I still love him. <laughs> I, I, I was going to assume, not knowing what this character is, it's like a face from like a nemesis from like Resident Evil. I Stitches. like I like where you went. It is the exact opposite, Stitches but I like where you went. A, a cute teddy bear that's been stitched together with different material. <laughs> it's like one of the cutest things. I'm going to put these uh, animals up on the screen and give myself work to do, so the audience can see what who no, we're talking you're about. Not. I um, will. Brittany, Give them homework. <laughs> do you think that in the distant future there will be a gritty reboot of Animal Crossing? And God, I hope so. And uh, <laughs> Stitches is one of like the mid tier uh, boss fights. Yes, for sure. I really appreciate the fact that you just went after Brittany in the most direct way possible by putting everything she loves together yeah. with Animal Crossing and the apocalypse. <laughs> Yes, I am ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> I would like three, please. Three of yes. this game. Yes, please. <laughs> we did, One we, free switch. <laughs> we, we did buy three of Animal Crossing. Yeah, it's ridiculous. This, <laughs> this fucking person over here has to make a huge project out of everything fun. Yep, right. So let's just play Animal Crossing together. Oh, let's also have a third switch that we leave on all of the time, 24 hours. At 5 o'clock, I have to go into it and reset it so that people online can come in and be in this town together as a community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's working yeah. out really well, actually. It's way less work than uh, Force Life the show was. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I accidentally put my switch on the dock to charge and accidentally turned off the other switch, just absentmindedly turned it off. Because you had and, to charge your switch. Yeah. <laughs> and I got in so much trouble for turning that switch off. <laughs> She's like, my switch's been down for four hours. <laughs> People are trying to sell their pairs, but there's no way for them to sell their pairs. I was, ve- I was very distraught. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that actually, that got me to uh, clean up part, uh, the only the part of the living room that I cared about. Yeah, because because Brittany cleaned up the rest after you that. Were, <laughs> you you were charging it on my desk, like that's where it would get charged. Mm-hmm. It was right in front of me, so, so I was like, I, "This I, is my dock. I'm going to put my switch on it." Yeah, I put the third dock up <laughs> and got it set up in the living room. There yeah. is something kind of amazing about how Michelle will take. Like this very <laughs> relaxing game and then build st- because the game doesn't have structures on it. It's not forcing you to do anything. So it's just her. It is her yeah. forcing structure and and parameters around a pretty freeform jazz game and saying, OK, we're going to play this fun game. But we're going to strip all of the fun relaxation out of it. We're going to play it that- an hour every day for a fucking year. Ask her, ask her about the stock market um, spreadsheet she has now with graphs so that she can track the prices to know which day is the sell day in the town. Jesus. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Fun fact. I have, Apply uh, that to your job. <laughs> I, I have because I've uh, deliberated and I've given it to other people to actually oh. do. <laughs> Like, hey, person in this uh, this group of mine, I need you to fill out this f- uh, form twice a day. Jesus. <laughs> oh, I think did you, you could set it up? Start a cult. Yeah, yeah. I've set, I've set it up, and now I've got other people like filling it out. Did you set it up so it's all being captured in a Google Sheets doc, but it's fed mm-hmm. by a form? Yes. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> now I've got Jairus's approval. I've made a spreadsheet, so now Jairus is happy with me no, again. Like that, that's a good spreadsheet strategy. I I still don't endorse your behavior, but at least you're executing it well. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, it's 
just you fulfilling your lifelong dream of being an MMO uh, um, organizer. That's okay. true. I've I'm done MMOist. it a few times. I'm MMOist. That, MMOist. <laughs> that sounds like a like almost a um, racial term for like Hawaiians. What? I, I see what you're getting. What? There. Sounds That's a like bad a joke. It's a real bad joke. Oh yeah, Girl Scouts would have been a much better joke. <laughs> wow. Wow, I went right for the race, did you? Yeah. That's where my brain went. Sometimes oh. I'm terrible. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should hutch your back in, Michelle. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> Let, wait, how much time we got on that timer? I can't matter. relate to any of this. Seven, <laughs> Seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clutch, have uh, you hutch, ever hutch. have you ever played an Animal Crossing? Yeah, I got um what was it, New Leaf on the three DS and mm. I gave it a shot. It, it, <laughs> I, I I just need a little more like he, he can shoot zombies. Game. So, oh, so, so the thing about Animal Crossing is when you first get the game, it's a slow build to do anything. Mm. Uh sometimes you have to just be like, Okay, there's really nothing else to do today because it's all like real time. Um, but the 3DS was really easy to time travel on, so that's what I did on the 3DS. I'm considering yeah, time traveling on criminal. the Switch, but I haven't yet. But I suggest if you feel like the game is moving too slowly to just time travel. So I'll probably time travel like down the road when I do like a second town or something like that. A second town. <laughs> Jesus. Like, you mean a third delete, town? Like when I've done everything in my current town, I'll, I'll, when he's start, beaten, I'll make a, I'll, she's I'll beaten, delete it. Sorry. Yeah. Um <laughs> when she has beaten Animal Crossing, she uh, will yeah. she will I'll she will delete the town game start plus. again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kill all of the animal residents that live I, on the island. <laughs> if it's if it's like if it's like New Leaf, it will be a new game plus cuz I'll start with all the money I made cuz you kind of sell what your island. What if at the end we can hunt you the animals? You sell your island? Oh, yeah, you sell yeah. your island in New Leaf. New game plus is just an FPS. Yeah. Can Ooh. you just hunt your animals? What That'd if be kind of great. What if they tapped into the emerging trend of Battle Royale games and New Game Ooh. Plus is just uh, All Fortnite. the animals? If it's Fortnite, or, but you don't get to choose which animal you are, ooh, and you just become, and yeah. each one has different skills. That sounds good. Or just animal fight, where you place bets on which animal wins. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> Brittany, oh, Brittany that's, wants to that's the new question who which animal from animal crossing would win if kabuki. they all kabuki <laughs> um kabuki. lady I'm friend say has Ken's. snake and i'm a big fan of snake because snake is sneaky snake is pretty um, cool yeah. he's he's a rabbit Definitely. so he's quick he's also a ninja um and he's a tough boy very strong I'm gonna go with Ken, I, Ken the chicken because he is a samurai, but he, no one knows it. Please keep it a secret. <laughs> I'm telling everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you can't fucking play Animal Crossing, Hutch. Oh. I, I, I'm gonna choose DJ KK Slider um, because he's currently my spirit in um, Smash Brothers World of Light. By the way, <laughs> I finally unlocked all the characters in Smash Brothers this weekend. I saw that you were playing that, and I actually it was like. Three o'clock in the morning, and I almost like sent you a message about you want to play some Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amused that your brain goes there and not like, "Hey, dude, you all right? <laughs> Everything I okay?" I was up for another no three hours. It. <laughs> oh, it was it was just in the Switch, and I was like, uh, I, I was playing in bed, and I was like, "Why don't I just try and like actually make some progress in this game?" And I did. Oh, I got like half of the. Um, um, the War of Light thing done, and then I still have to uncover the other half of it. And I just realized there's a damn space like board mm-hmm. to it. Yeah, and I was like, wow, okay. Well, the 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 like, I know we're like jumping ships here, but the the single player for like Smash Brothers Ultimate is legit amazing. Yeah, and long. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Long and amazing. Yeah, they, it's I, definitely I the ultimate question. smash. Michelle, do you have any good question. spreadsheets regarding the single player version of uh, Smash Brothers? <laughs> no, I didn't care enough about that video game. Oh, Th- me. Either. This is legitimately, <laughs> this is Brittany with um, papers, please, all over again. It is. It is. 
Brittany kind of... I love Papers, Please. I could play that game again. <laughs> well, I mean, we own it on the PlayStation Vita. Ooh, we that would be a good it. It's been on sale. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Animal, <laughs> Animal Crossing, but it's Papers, Please. Ooh. Boom. I Boom. like it. I kind of want to hear the cute version but of it's Papers, cute, like, Please song. Emily's version of mm-hmm. paper, yeah. Papers, Please. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to assassinate Drago. Draco. <clears throat> oh my god. <laughs> Beautiful. It's just uh all the slutty animals trying to break into uh the new ta- Animal Crossing town. Dude, I have a slutty frog in my town. Her name you is have a Jim slutty Bet. frog. She has some DSLs. <laughs> 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 her bright pink and she has blue eyeshadow on and she wears a towel. <laughs> <laughs> um, you She's are ready de- at all times. You are describing this animal in a way that all I'm picturing is the female gremlins from Gremlins 2, the new batch. That, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. exactly oh, yeah. how she looks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your brain went so, to the right place. Yeah. <laughs> so I imagine that you're just giving her all of the gifts ever. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm. She, I found her on a deserted island, and I was like, you're coming home with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you don't get a say in this. Come here, you're going to sleep in this tent. I set it up for you. Mm-hmm. No, you sleep there. There's nothing to I do actually, on this island. I actually built her, I actually built her a house. <laughs> she was one of the first animals I built a house for, so. Hell Yeah. So- so does this game have a, a random animal generator? Yes, basically. Yeah. Cool. You can also pick animals, though, for the first time ever in this one. If you have the amiibo cards. Yes. But there are like four bajillion exist, existent animals, correct? Yeah. There's yep. there's like over 400. Yeah. Mm. Gotta collect them all. And you can only have 10 at any given time. <laughs> Oh, Steph's so you been pick out your favorites. Uh, going to a bunch of islands and trying to find the perfect animals. Um, mm-hmm. And she really wants a penguin, but she can't find a fucking penguin to save her life. Oh, yeah. I got a penguin. She's going to come to your <laughs> island and try and snatch that penguin. <laughs> His name is Tex. He's really cool. <laughs> oh, I met uh, nice. Tex in the mobile game. Uh, she's a mm. big cube fan. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She wants cube. Do we have Cube the Amiibo card? I don't think. No, I don't think so. I could just mm. download an Amiibo for her and send it to can her. Can you do that? You wouldn't yeah, download, you download an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hutch, do you still have those like uh, r- those uh, Amiibo things that you can like change what they're what the uh, NRC thing is? Don't hack. That's a crime. <laughs> eh. So so is the fact that Amiibo cards for Animal Crossing are like 18 times the original price right now. Yeah. They're um, real I, bad. No, the one the ones I had were like I mean I actually don't know where they're at, but I think you can get them on eBay for cheap. Okay. Yeah, I'll check it out. I'll send her a key. But I I think that you need like an actual Android phone to do it because with the lockdown of how Apple Oh, that works out because that's, I believe, what you two have. So, yep. And Android? Yeah, they're yeah. both Android. Well, with that, you know what? I think we've declared uh, Stitches Bye. the president. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see us perform live? Use that big brand of yours and follow us on Twitch. We do things live there sometimes. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I have a super secret question for the group. The question is, do you think it's ethical to own a human skull? <laughs> <laughs> She's asking for a friend. <laughs> I'm I, not asking for a friend. <laughs> I think it depends on how the skull... I mean, I don't think it's unethical. <laughs> so there is no law in the United States about yeah. selling and shipping human remains unless mm-hmm. it's uh, like Native American remains. Um, there's a few states that won't allow you to uh, ship them. It's just Georgia, Tennessee, and Louisiana. We're nice. in North Carolina. We're not part of that group. So I found this website called theboneroom.com. <laughs> <laughs> and they sell real human skulls. They apparently got them from China and India before it was illegal to export them out. But wow. they don't say like like how they got them. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Like I, I guess they're like digging 
Uh, maybe they're like archaeological. This is you know you didn't explain any of this to me okay. when you told me about this question because it's getting a, it's getting to murkier and murkier territory right now. Well, I did a little extra research this morning and I was like, oh, I wonder how they get these skulls. And it seems like it's a don't ask, don't tell sort of situation. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I am less comfortable with that, especially since they have a section in their human skulls menu that says fetal and child skulls. Right? That's a little creepy, too. Um, but apparently you can get link. a skull for about two grand. <laughs> so I think you also need to uh, back up a little bit. Um, you don't. This is an area about you that you've never explained on this show, is that you enjoy collecting <laughs> sounds, skulls. This sounds creepy. Uh, you're a serial killer. and <laughs> <clears throat> You have a lot of animal skulls. I do collect animal skulls. Um Growing up in the mountains, there wasn't much to do. <laughs> <laughs> and also, my mom was in vet school when I was a kid, so we had, like, some weird shit going on. Like, one time we found, like, this dead baby deer, mm -hmm. and my mom was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to collect all these bones. I'm going to clean them up, collect these bones, and I'm going to glue it back together, and I'm going to have, like, a full skeleton. Um, and I was really little. I was maybe, like, six Mm -hmm. five or six and i watched her do this mm. and i just thought it was the neatest thing and she'd started to like glue the bones together and she never finished it because it's Im almost impossible to like find all of the little tiny bones that she had like mm. we were just out in the woods with like a, a garbage bag basically yeah yeah um but I just thought the process was so cool as a kid that, like, you walk in the woods, you'll just find skulls and mm -hmm. bones that are already, like, clean and bleached from the sun. Um, mm -hmm. But I started to pick up roadkill when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah. And I would clean the, I would clean them, and I have several skulls. And the animals were already dead. Like, I never killed an animal just for its skull. Um, right. It's, it, but you're, I, you're more of a found skull person. Yeah, I consider myself like a scavenger. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that would be really cool if I had like a human skull. And I was like, there's no way that I could get one because that seems insane. Uh, so I like just Googled it. And apparently there are places where you can buy a human skull. And I was like, wow, I don't know if I'd ever spend two grand on it because that's not my collection is yeah. not that important to me. Well, I, I but, think I feel... <sighs> kind of the same about a human skull as you with animal skulls like the the acquisition is is what makes it ethical or unethical unethical mm -hmm. in in my opinion like this bone room i, I don't know how they're getting their skeletons like yeah they don't really say if they're so. grave robbing then that's unethical um yeah if they're going to destitute regions or or and saying like hey when you die give us your body <laughs> yeah. we will pay your family two thousand dollars or whatever mm -hmm. um that's maybe not as bad but i yeah it, it still I mean, rubs as long me as the, the family's wrong getting way. some money out of it you know or the person got some like something out yeah. of it now if you had a relative um, or an enemy and <laughs> kept the skull as a memento, that <laughs> would be a behavior that I would fully support. Fun fact, I've already promised Brittany she can have my skeleton. Yeah. Yeah, well, and I, I get to like, keep her skeleton. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be perfectly fine. <laughs> Cat cover and diamonds, though, like fifty cent blood and sand. <laughs> did I, so, did I ever tell you about uh, when I went to the? So we're we're based in North Carolina, and North Carolina has a weirdly rich uh, pirate history associated with it. Yeah, um, yeah. and one of the local schools, local universities, has an archaeology program. Uh, that focuses on underwater shit, and they found a bunch of old, like, pirate ships and, and crazy shit like that. Um, and I went to the museum to check out this exhibit, because I was like, ah, this is dope. I bet they found some really cool, weird shit. And one of the things that they had was what may or may not have been Blackbeard's skull. 
Ooh. Um, yeah. Because Fancy. Blackbeard, when his like when he was hanging out with his pirate buddies, he was like, "Hey, when I die, turn my skull into a silver chalice." Hmm. Um. So That's he was banging. he was captured by uh the navy and um like taken to a base in Virginia and decapitated and his head was like put on a spike or whatever. Um. And all of his pirate boys just rolled up, invaded this naval base, <laughs> took his skull, and then stripped it off and turned it into a silver chalice. And I saw that shit, and it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. That's um, fucking awesome, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I can think of no better way for me to be remembered than to be a silver skull chalice. <laughs> I will authorize you... Maybe I should update my will to authorize yeah, Brittany update. to take my skull. Because I'm going to be cremated. I just want to be like a 90-year-old lady just like sipping from uh, this like human skull chalice. And people are like, what is this? I'm like, oh, this is my best friend's skull. <laughs> you're, you're, you're hanging out at a flea market selling like... Yeah. Mm, <laughs> old video game consoles just drinking sweet just selling tea. all my shit because i'm dead yeah <laughs> i just have two skulls that i'm drinking from <laughs> Brittany, can you can you do me a favor when all of this happens way down the road and whatever equivalent to netflix is going on right now can you make sure you document all of this with document oh, uh i sure. just want your own tiger king episode for sure for sure mm. skull queen Skull, Skull Queen. Queens. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> that's my that's my that's my goal. Alright. Skull Queen. It's Skull Queen. <laughs> I'm updating my Twitter bio right now. <laughs> <laughs> BT Dubs. I, I am on boneroom.com and I found a section about the founder of boneroom.com mm -hmm. um who looks like if uh the rich millionaire from Jurassic Park's life took a really weird turn <laughs> and never went the science direction. Okay. Okay. Like, apparently, he did, just uh, loves amber and things. Did he in spare amber. no expense? <laughs> I believe so. Wow. Well, Ron. Collins. Oh, yeah. Wow. You were not wrong. Yeah. Man. Do you work with search and rescue dogs? If you are looking for bones suitable to train search and rescue dogs, please see here. We have provided bones for many search and rescue dog trainers in the past and have experience to help you find exactly what you need at a more affordable price. I don't. <sighs> Join our newsletter for coupons. <laughs> looking for human skulls? You are in the right place. The Bone Room has been selling human skulls and bones for over 25 years. We have the largest selection of human skulls available. Browse our online selection here, and if you don't see what you're looking for, email us and we'll send you more options. That is the most terrifying part of this thing. <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? That what is, that's that mean? like the back room at the Bone Room, like here's our illegal... Like... I wonder, are they just like going to the catacombs and France? and just stealing fucking skulls in the walls yeah like, or maybe they're gonna no go idea. out and make skulls and by make skulls i mean kill somebody and remove their uh -huh. head meat uh -huh. i mean Man, that'd be the cheapest that, way that sounds like it would make a really insane like netflix series if it yeah. didn't seem so weird and grim no that's fine have you not watched tiger king that's netflix's wheelhouse i right have now. as a matter of just fact weird as fuck <laughs> i feel like i feel like we're about to go into our next segment all right guys we'll see you uh on the next segment sorry i'm just something? reading about no, how i went to their faqs uh, Melissa, ah, fuck I'm we doing still it. have sorry. four four minutes left yeah. come on now we went Cooler back. I was, you were just sitting there. I, because I'm reading about how they will buy. You should have read before the art. They will buy. <laughs> they will buy bones from you. And they say uh, other animals, skulls, hyenas, giraffe. And they're like, hard to ship, I know. <laughs> they're like, please, we'd love giraffe skulls. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, also, Barkley, uh, that behavior isn't weird to me. One day I went over to my mother's house and I was like, 
hey, uh, I'm going to get a glass of water. And she was like, cool. If you need ice, be careful because there's a crow in the freezer. Because <laughs> she does that shit, too. She just picks shit up off of the side of the road. Yeah, my, my grandpa had a hummingbird in the freezer for a really long time. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing with that thing, but he would like, whenever company came over, he would pull it out and show them. <laughs> like my, I feel like my grandpa also. Was it he in had a like block of little... ice or was it just a loose hummingbird? <laughs> it, was, it was in a plastic bag, like a Ziploc bag. <laughs> but he had like a... He had like a cabinet that was full of like arrowheads and different rocks and bird nests and, and things like that. And he would collect also weird shit. And a lot of my collection is passed down from him. Um, but yeah, he would like keep weird shit in the house like that, that he would just show to like company that came over, like a hummingbird. <laughs> we also had like a big fish that he kept in the freezer that I don't know if he caught that fish or <laughs> where it came from. <laughs> he found it on the side of the road. It would not <laughs> surprise me in the least. That's but a perfectly yeah, good road like... fish. <laughs> well, well, that Brittany, I have a question for you. When what? when Frank and Beans die, are you going to want their skeletons? Yeah, I already told you. I'd like to get Frank stuffed. <laughs> okay. In the attack oh. position. <laughs> <laughs> I support we'll this behavior. It's the only way to pay homage to <laughs> and, him. And we'll put him like at the door, like so when people come in, they're like, ah. So we should also get the taxidermist to make a cast of him so that we can mm -hmm. make like bronze statues to put outside in your eventual garden. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> God, I and love maybe Frank. maybe get them to pose him in different ways so he has like one or like different casts so that mm. there's one that's like Frank just sleeping and there's one that's Frank just watching mm -hmm. and then Brittany can mm -hmm. trade those out from time to time yeah I feel like the hardest decision when it comes to taxidermy is deciding what position to put them in I don't know how I feel about that cat haunting me after he's gone I support it <laughs> My uh, we got a special sister. Christmas present for you, Hutch. <laughs> oh, no. He just becomes this is like the a, worst birthday ever. He, <coughs> he just becomes like the joke Christmas present that we like keep giving to each other every yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God, like, don't give him the dare. It's the like, sisterhood of traveling pants, but with a dead cat. Yeah. <laughs> oh it's man. Like, well, you got him for a year. So. <laughs> speaking of <clears throat> speaking of dead cats and animals in freezers, I had a friend whose cat just died all of a sudden and he didn't have time to bury it so he put his cat in a freezer so he could like go home that weekend and bury it but he didn't and that cat stayed in a freezer for like three years <laughs> and i just every every weekend i would just call him and be like hey are we burying your cat yet and he's like oh no oh, I'm, I'm busy i'm concerned about this is this a person that i know no, you don't okay. know this person. Although I try to get you to meet him all the time back in the day, um, but we'll never see him again because he's one of those people who accidentally had a kid. So now we'll never see him again. Yeah, he accidentally had a kid and then he got married. He tripped and fell and into a vagina. And he's super sad now. So yeah, we're he's like, a sad oh, boy. goodbye. <laughs> never us. <laughs> okay, well, our time is up. <laughs> I feel like that was a good that was a yeah. good segment, you guys. This I'll segment know. brought to you by theboneroom.com. If you type in if you go to theboneroom.com yeah. slash Brittany, you'll get yeah, you zero percent off your off order. You can use my coupon. <laughs> and if you're from boneroom.com and you're listening to this, we'd like money. Brittany wants or a skull. skull. <laughs> Brittany yeah, I'll, skull. Take, I'll take skulls. Yeah. Do you got a spare skull? I'll take a draft one. I know they're hard to ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. 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 <laughs>
Cut Great. out the like, comment, subscribe. It's just gonna be that. Damn on that bell. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. on that bell. Uh, hey, uh, welcome back. Um, I binged this crazy show on Netflix last weekend. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. The uh, Tiger King. <laughs> <laughs> um, and gosh darn, there's a lot going on in that show. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess. Uh, it, so Hutch, for those you, who what were your key takeaways? What were the most important things that you learned? Uh, that Carol Baskin's a murderer. <laughs> uh, Good. <laughs> And yeah. uh, <laughs> God. I, uh, I learned and that too, and I haven't watched it. <laughs> <laughs> so, quick question: If you had to join one tiger sex cult, which tiger sex cult would you join? Oh God! Um, uh, the one where everyone's living in uh, big, uh, expensive houses—that seemed like the, the right one to go for. <laughs> The one in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> the one in Myrtle Beach. I think it was the one in Myrtle Conveniently, Beach. Conveniently, yeah. it's the closest one. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I, I, I think it's actually shut down now, though. I think he got... They said they got raided. Ooh. Buddy. To um, the Juju. <laughs> so, I, know, I got a question. As someone who... I, I think I'm the only one who hasn't seen this yeah. now. Um, oh, does this tried. show have... I, I don't even want to try. Like, Brittany gave me a synopsis of every episode at the end of her wa- her watching every episode. <laughs> I'm sure there's some stuff I missed, though, because yeah. it's just so insane. Well, I want to ask, does uh, uh, Sigmund and Freud come up in this at all? With yes. their white Siberian tigers? Yes. Okay. Uh, only because... Sigmund uh, Freud? I don't know what their names Joe are. Joe Exotic Siegfried is like, boy. fuck those guys. I'm better than them. Mm-hmm. We have magic, too. Because a 10-year-old boy taught him magic. <laughs> 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 That's right. Yeah, he did it. And yeah, so uh, it, it, one of the first Antle. things he did was like a magic show <laughs> with tigers. One of one yeah. of the guys actually sold some of the tigers to them. Wow, they've really? They've all sold tigers to each other. Like honestly, like if a guy owns a tiger, he probably got it from like these people. So <laughs> all right, it is like I felt like. I saw an ad for it on Twitter uh, at work, and I told everyone at work, I was like, oh shit, this looks like a batshit crazy uh, (laughs) documentary, I'm gonna go home and watch it, and then I came home and watched it, and I was like, that was way crazier than I thought it would be, like, every episode as it ended, they'd always add, like, a kind of a cliffhanger, and you're like, oh my god, please tell me more about that thing that you just mentioned, (laughs) so you'd watch the next episode. (laughs) Uh, but it was just insane, the things, like, my key takeaways, my favorite parts were where they were looking through the Walmart truck full of, uh, expired meat, <laughs> and oh, then they, God, they yes. made the pizzas with the expired meat <laughs> oh. that they sold in the restaurant. <laughs> God. Uh, well, they were, those people were only paid, like, $120 a week. Yeah. It so, was mostly volunteer based. <laughs> wow. Well, it was interesting that they had three different strategies. One of which was like, I'm going to pay people, but not a lot. Another was like, I'm going to trick people into volunteering for my tiger thing. And mm-hmm. Doc Antle is like, I'm going to have a bunch of women that are just part of my sex cult. Yeah. They all are very cultish, you know. Yeah. They, like even Joe Exotic, he he would drive around to the, like the bus stops and see people who had been sitting there all day, who obviously yeah. had no place to go. Uh, a lot of these people were people who just got out of prison, so they had no options, you know. So he basically like went around and. Uh, preyed upon the vulnerable and was yeah. like, you're going to come work at my tiger farm, you're going to have a place to live, and you're going to have food, uh, and I'm not going to pay you hardly any money, but it's better than sitting at a bus stop. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I think one of the most insane parts of it was, like, the uh, the, the worker who had their hand um, eaten uh, went right back to work, like, the next week. Well, like, yeah, she than... was she was out for five days. She had like her arm amputated for because a tiger ate a it? tiger bit her hand off. No, and... it didn't bite it off. It bit her bad, and the doctor was like, "Well, 
You can have your oh, use yeah, of your right. hand again, but it's going to be like six months of reconstructive surgery and rehabilitation. And she was like, nah, just cut it off. Yeah, you're wow. right. You're that right. was the oh, yeah, fuckest bullshit. Right. Fuck. That was fucking wild. That was the moment she- where I was like, what is going on in this fucking thing? <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm having a moment right now because... Oh, I know, like, amputation is one of your biggest fears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that just fucking wrecked me yeah, right now. Yeah, you're right. She could have saved her hand, but she chose not to. And she was back at work in five days. That... And she went before the press and was like... Because they knew they were going to get some bad press when that happened. So she went out before the press and was like, no, it's fine. It's no big deal. I was <laughs> asking right back for at it. Work. <laughs> Also, um, did anybody else notice that Joe had an EMT jacket? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like would on would the wear? day of. Yeah. <laughs> Where did he get that from? <laughs> <laughs> Probably an army buy Navy anything on Etsy. store. <laughs> he just like would wear it, I guess, when there was emergencies, so that he would seem important. Like he, I don't know, it was really bizarre. <laughs> so. I, I I have a I have like a, a synopsis of what's going on with this show, but I have a, I have a really weird question. Do, this documentary that they were filming was going on, and while this guy was n- knowingly getting all of this shit documented, decided to like plan a murder. Yes. So, yeah. So <laughs> yes. his and his he wanted to film and stream his entire life. Uh huh. Everywhere he went, he had people follow him with cameras. Everything he did was filmed or streamed online. He no. had a show very similar to you <laughs> 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 that he would do every night. Wow. Um, so <laughs> he the real is basically Michelle hasn't watched it. Is yeah, she, it's like, <laughs> she's worried that she'll feel bad. <laughs> so he's well, now just I am. <laughs> living his he's just living his life doing whatever the fuck he wants and okay. all of it's getting filmed the entire time okay um but the thing that is so weird about it is that so he would threaten carol baskins all the time online and i feel like that you're not allowed to do that like i have some sort of idea in my head that you can't outright tell somebody you're going to kill them or have a blow up doll that is dressed like them and be like, this is what I'm going to do to you and shoot it in the head. Um, but all the police and lawyers are like, well, we couldn't really do anything about it because he's just saying those things. He's not actually doing anything. And it's like, uh, I didn't think you're allowed to do things like that, but apparently you are. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I thought threats were like, uh, an issue. Yeah. Cause some of the stuff he said and did that was filmed that he'd put out on Facebook and shit was like, just outright, like, I'm going to kill this lady. So yeah. it was really bizarre. <laughs> and, and then he took it one step further and actually went to her, like, her sanctuary mm. and and started, like, flying a heli- helicopter over it. Like, ugh. That he was, was super yeah. obsessed. He was trying to figure out where all the tigers were because she claimed she had, like, this many big cats, but they only saw, like, this other number. But he was like, the thing that killed me, though, about all of these people is that they, bottom line, they did not care about the animals. Um, he was like, when he was flying over them in the helicopter, he's like, oh, I just want to drop grenades on, like, her property. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, you obviously none of you guys really have the animal welfare in mind you know mm. yeah well i i think that was one of the things they got into at the end of it was like hey all of these people appear to have given a shit about animals at some point but then they got into this field and liked making the money or liked leading their sex cult or fucking whatever mm-hmm. and the animals fell by the wayside yeah, it was... So, I think the most dissatisfying part of the documentary for me was at the end when he went to jail, I was like, okay, well, his um, his animals are probably going to be, like, dissolved or sent to places, you know, where they can not be in small cages and have food and shit like that. But it just got, like, transferred over to some other guy, uh, and they just rebuilt a new... A park and it's like okay well these animals really didn't get happy endings you know so it was like that's super unsatisfying in my opinion 
And then the statistic at the end was very alarming, too, that there are more domestic or there's more tigers in privately owned like zoos and and people own them than there are in the wild. Mm -hmm. Like there's like 10,000 tigers in the United States, but there's only there's like under 4,000 in the wild. I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know how to fix this problem. I feel like it's a very like it's not a straight answer problem, but we should be doing something a little better. And it's also bizarre to me that the U.S. doesn't have any laws against uh, breeding and keeping these endangered animals here. It's, I don't know, it's it's all just really bizarre to me. I'm not surprised by that, mostly just because people constantly ask those questions about pandas. And the only reason why pandas are regulated at all, at all or is because of China mm -hmm. and the international laws we have with them. Um, but uh, I'm not surprised that because <coughs> tigers don't have those rules and because no. they are endangered, that they've been allowed to breed them even at like um, – in not in poor conditions yeah <clears throat> yeah so john steinbeck has a quote um and it's uh, uh something along the lines of americans uh regard themselves not as poor but as temporarily displaced millionaires so I, yeah like there's this idea that people think that they're going to get rich or like like super absurdly rich and i am mm. and that's why you know people want low taxes on the super wealthy so that when they become super wealthy they'll have low taxes and i imagine yeah. there's an element that is i don't want there to be anti-tiger owning laws because one day i could probably own a tiger yeah that makes yeah. sense that yeah that makes a lot of sense <clears throat> so hutch what was your question <laughs> 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 Poor Hutch. She's like, I just want to talk about. Where do I begin? Hutch thing. just wanted to uh, aim us at a thing. My, my my question is: Are you guys listening to country music more now as a result of this show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I at, not as a result, but yes. <laughs> so Chris at work also watched this documentary and has been messaging me like constantly about it and. We played the we played Joe's music videos at work on our last few days while we were there. <laughs> well, apparently he didn't write any of those songs, and that's not actually him singing. Oh, really? really? Yeah, there's yeah, that's right. Another <laughs> band. I'm Mike Clack as I Google. Um, Which makes sense because I didn't think it sounded like him at all. <laughs> so I enjoyed that when he was singing at his husband's funeral and he was singing but over himself. <laughs> like yeah. they just played his song and he and then he just got up and sang like with it. <laughs> wow. It's like what's happening? That was it's another the most that was another deaths yeah. the Clinton that was another Johnson band. Thing. That you don't know about. I don't think I told you about no. it. So he had multiple husbands. I do know about that. All of them were straight, apparently. Okay. <laughs> uh, but one of them got really depressed and ended up committing suicide, like on site. And they had they didn't have the suicide itself on camera, mm -hmm. but there he like walked into a building where this other guy was sitting doing office work and shot himself in front of the guy. So the guy who saw it happen, you had his reaction on camera. No. Oh. So it was really insane to just see that. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, there was just so much shocking <laughs> shit in this documentary. Like, I was not prepared for half yeah. of it. That, that I, I feel guy like I know everything about was, it. And I, I, I hear something new almost every yeah. time it gets talked about. That guy was Joe Exotic's campaign manager for when he ran for president. Yes. Oh, that guy. Okay, go. great. So I did yeah. show Michelle the clip of the John the John Oliver clip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she did see that. Yeah, and I had seen it before back when it was like new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of bizarre. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. I still yeah, think oh my, my my other favorite thing was when they met the kill for hire at Applebee's. <laughs> 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 well, where else? Yeah. I, I think that's more of an Outback know. Steakhouse place. Yeah, I agree. You, you want to class it up just a tad. Yeah, you want to get a Bloomin' Onion. Mm -hmm. You want to get the Alice Springs Steak? Is that right? Chicken. Alice Springs Chicken. Mm, yeah, that's the one with... Is that the one with cheese on it? I don't remember. Yes. Yeah, it's got cheese, bacon, and mushrooms. Mm. 
God damn it. Uh, now I want that. Now I want that too. We talk about the like we talk about Outback in this podcast like once every other month. And because um, we're waiting for them to send us our check. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Outback. <laughs> this episode is not brought to you by Outback unless Outback Steakhouse uh wants to give us some sweet, sweet fliff. <laughs> I before we end, uh uh-huh. um, so the one of the the, the crazier well cra- oh, uh. so the um the reality like filming shit like so it's got the scene where for some reason he takes like his phone or some camera and to go like chat with his lawyer when he's having like a falling out with the, the director of the thing and records the whole like conversation alluding to him giving the recommendation like well, what if he just uh, does he have any backups of the the footage he's got? And so he's basically implicating himself in the arson. Yeah. Wow. Of, of yeah. this dude's footage. Uh. Yeah, I I don't <laughs> know why he has that or gave it to anyone else. Exactly. Like, I feel like every single person in this documentary should be in jail. Like everybody. Is everybody. Like- everyone's like kind of admitted to doing stuff and it, yeah it was just a fucking wild ride the so the filmmaker i i i um, heard that um he moved to dallas or somewhere else in texas mm-hmm. and then his apartment was um caught on fire yeah there too so really yeah <laughs> I, I don't know if there was any foul play with that but just some just some shit going that on is with insane i kind of feel bad for the uh, for the people who documented this but at the same time i'm also like like you to be around these people something had to like there was yeah. got to be a trade off somewhere it's like imagine that you live on the jerry springer show <laughs> is what this show is like yeah that's insane just yeah. crazy no rules hey, just have right have you ever had house <laughs> <laughs> if no, <laughs> learn something. Just tiger the meth. All right, well, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and close it up there. I'm sure we're going to talk about Tiger King some more at another later segment. I don't know how, but it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. I you really should watch it. I'm probably going to watch it after this. I'll uh, I'll sit with you and watch it again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just hold it's her fine. hand and comfort her through the dark times. You might need to. You might need to hold my hand and comfort me in some of these moments. I will. Because you know I can't stand awkwardness. Yeah. And oh, you're in for a wild ride girl <laughs> yeah i there's a re- like i watched like like 10 to 15 seconds of this show at a time mm-hmm. with like behind your back and i'd be like nope <laughs> just nope right out of this so if i watch it i'm going to be like an like an episode is going to be a day for me yeah that's fine <laughs> you need a day to process what's happened so okay all right all right for and, well, for and, if, col- and if you and if you want more video content about crazy ass zoos check out our past heat wave episodes yeah, exactly <laughs> hands on account of <laughs> her experience god Ash, or new river zoo is what it was called <laughs> wow we should go That's up right. there and ask him if he knows carol baskin <laughs> i should ask him that <laughs> fuck that guy <laughs> fuck carol baskin just kick him in the dick and yell carol baskin and run away <laughs> <laughs> all right guys bye everybody right, bye. Bye. bye do you want to watch heat wave before anyone else well there's an easy way to do that just back us up on patreon at patreon.com slash half empty tank and be the first to watch the episodes hi welcome back to heat wave uh i didn't ha- really have a planned topic uh, uh. so here's what we're gonna do <laughs> fucking criminal i'm gonna say first Happy Easter! Easter's coming up. This is the last segment right before Easter, so enjoy that. Um, let's just start the conversation with Brittany. What's your favorite Easter memory? Um, probably the Easter that my dad was with us. The first Easter when my mom and my dad got back together. Mm-hmm. And my dad was trying to overcompensate for like seven years of abandonment. <laughs> and he got me this giant fucking Easter basket full of like... All kinds of fucking candy and fingernail polish and just a bunch of really fantastic things that a seven-year-old girl would love. Yeah. And it was the best Easter ever. Well, that's good. (laughs) 
I mean, the connotation around it is terrible, but well, I'm you glad know you what? had a good time. You gotta, make, you gotta make lemonade out of lemons. All right. So <laughs> I'll take this basket of overcompensation. No problem. You got it. It had like every flavor of nerds in it, which is one of my favorite candies when I was a kid. But it was mm-hmm. the 90s, so it was just two. No, it was it was more than that. It was like honestly, the flavors that were in that basket, I search for them in stores. They just don't exist anymore. Mm. Yeah, you're thinking of runts. Runts are the ones that used to have two flavors, and now they have a ton of them. Uh, okay. Um, Jairus, what about you? Do you have a favorite Easter uh, memory? Not really. I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Easter is always a whatever holiday. Yeah, for Easter me. is a I'm, fucking whatever. I'm not, like, we usually, I'm not religious, yeah. so it doesn't have any significance for me. And usually, when I was a kid, Easter was the same as spring break. Like they would arrange it so mm-hmm. it was the same mm-hmm. time. And so a lot of times I was traveling with uh, school or friends, and I always missed Easter. Yeah. So there was a lot of Easter's I didn't celebrate because I was on a trip somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Easter's always been kind of a, eh, whatever. Well, what, what about you, Hutch? I think you're the most religious out of all of us. Do you ever do anything special for Easter or do you have any plans or memories? Um, not really. None that don't involve like making eggs, uh, <laughs> dying eggs. Like, like that shit was- <laughs> Hutch sits on his nest <laughs> and lays eggs for the oh, special day. <laughs> I'm just making... <laughs> Eggs. I gotta tell you, I'm making a killing right now. (laughs) (laughs) Call him Big Egg Hutch. Hutch, have you watched Beastars yet? Not yet, no. Okay, there's a section in there about this chicken who lays eggs. And she sells her own eggs (laughs) to the school to make egg salad sandwiches. And the wolf is like... Wednesdays are the best days, and she's like blushing because those are her eggs. <laughs> it's really uh, weird. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought of that. <laughs> uh, Brittany's been going down some weird assholes on Netflix lately. <laughs> I mean, I can't fault oh, her. Good. <laughs> well, um, for me, uh, probably my favorite Easter memory is as a kid. Uh, I was an only child, so I was spoiled, and. <laughs> Um, I got an Easter basket that had a Game Gear, uh, Game Genie in it Yo. for my Nintendo NES, and um, so uh, all seven of my NES games opened up, and I was able to cheat like Damn. crazy in them. Your parents got you good gifts. Uh, yeah, they they gave me like one. Well, I only got like my Christmas and birthday were the same day, so they kind of treated it like another Second birthday. Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> so they would get me one really good present. Thus explaining so- the Jesus thing. Yeah, the, it's all the Jesus uh, Jesus related holidays were special to me. Easter was always like a like you get chalk or bubbles or like a big gift. I would get sometimes like a bicycle. Oh, that's awesome! For Easter because it's yeah, just spring. like a spring thing, but yeah. it was mostly candy. Yeah, I totally forgot that I got gifts sometimes at Easter as well. I believe one of them was the the Nintendo uh, TMNT game. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, Yeah. we we were never... One, I'm not from a very religious family, and even the parts of my family that are religious, like, we just get together and do a meal. Usually, like, there wasn't a church service. Um, Mm -hmm. The majority of aspects of my family are poor, so there wasn't, like, gifts abound or any shit like that. So it was just like, hey, here's, like, a bunny, chocolate bunny. Let's eat some ham. I mean, that's the, I mean, because Brittany and I are adults now, uh, that's pretty much the this uh, how it is now. Uh, although, of course, your mom still makes his Easter baskets. <laughs> yeah, she makes his Easter baskets, but your usually mom is consists just of so wholesome. <clears throat> she is. Um, so it usually consists of a chocolate bunny, some Peeps, because I love Peeps, and my mom knows that, and some a Cadbury few eggs. some Cadbury eggs, and uh, I love all those things. So. <laughs> So, because we can't leave uh, the house for Easter, we decided that we're going to make a meal here, but we're not huge fans of ham, so we're going to make a turkey. We're essentially going to make like a Thanksgiving dinner for yep. Easter. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have Thanksgiving dinner at our house for just me and Brittany. So, that's what um, we're planning on doing. That sounds I'm pretty real sad that I, I, I won't have any Cadbury eggs this year, but I, I, I totally forgot about this. 
So they mm-hmm. made a Cadbury egg for Halloween that had like instead of like the uh, it had the uh, green stuff in it. Yolk, it had the green yolk instead. Mm-hmm. It was so good. They, they, they found a way to keep themselves relevant more than once a year. I love those things. They are so terrible for you, but I love them so much. <laughs> yeah. The sugar high is mm-hmm. just <laughs> over 9,000. <000. laughs> yeah. Um, I will say that I uh, I did um, enjoy Easter a lot more when I started uh, – get- when I, me and Brittany got into our relationship because she had a bunch of young children in her family. And I would go up to her house on Easter and we would just go Easter egg hunting. We would uh, paint a bunch of Easter eggs and me and Brittany usually were the ones who went out and hid them. Yeah, that was fun. And uh, the kids would go run around and like, you know, go find eggs. And that was really enjoyable for me. But my favorite part was when they got so old that they weren't into it. So the way that we turned it around, we were like, all right, you guys go hide the Easter eggs. Me and Brittany will go find them. And they got really into it, so we got really into it. And now each year we usually take turns. Yeah, we take we divide up into teams. Usually Michelle and I are on different teams, mm-hmm. um, and we just take turns hiding the eggs and then finding them again. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's probably <laughs> my favorite thing about Easter right now. It's like uh, the the kids. Uh, I use it's it's very rare that I can get them into something to where they're like got their head out of a screen or something like that. Kids so. these days. <laughs> Yeah, so Kids yeah. these days in their video games. <laughs> uh, which I don't know. Yeah, cigarettes and they're flossing. <laughs> so yeah, it's nice. It, it's always nice to like actually go outside and hang out with them and do something fun. It's kind of like playing a board game. I bring a board game yeah. to my parents' house whenever I go so I can actually talk to them. Because <laughs> when I go to her house, they're like, well, let's watch a movie. Let's watch another movie. And I'm just like, oh, cool. <laughs> Uh, can we have a conversation? <laughs> no. That no. means we'd actually have to get to know one another. <laughs> Aww. I like that you two um, really seem to take like to heart like holiday traditions. Like you guys seem to do things. Um, I think part of that for me, and maybe this goes for Brittany too. Um, I I've always been an only child, and for most of Brittany's childhood, she was an only child as well. Yeah, I was an only child until I was thirteen. So. Yeah, I don't know why I've always been an only child is the funniest thing to me because it like there's a layer of implication associated with it. Like, oh, I used to have a sister. <laughs> so fun fact my pa- when i was oh, no. uh, 11 years old <laughs> my parents were uh pregnant and uh they unfortunately had a miscarriage but like for months they were like oh you're gonna have a little sister or something like that and let me just like bring this whole thing down but uh <laughs> did you did you bad now. have one of those moments where like you wished at some arcade machine that mm-hmm. you didn't have a sister and then you oh, went yeah. on an adventure to learn the uh like the importance of family and togetherness and accepting uh things that are beyond your control. No, it's the exact opposite. I really wished that I didn't have a sister and then it happened and I felt like shit because I saw the aftermath of yeah, it. Yeah, that was the that was the other direction that, that could have gone. <laughs> How long did you think that you had magic powers for? Um, for probably about a month or so. She still does. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Growing up for me, like, um, uh, holidays were always a big deal in my family. Um, and we always put whatever bullshit we had aside and I always had the good feels. So I try to carry that into adult life. Like I still, um, want to celebrate the holidays. I love to decorate. Um, yeah. And I think. By yeah, the way, too. Hutch, uh, if if we still live in this apartment by the time Christmas comes around, uh, I am buying you a Christmas tree and we're setting it up because we didn't have space for a Christmas tree this year, and I am so sad. <laughs> oh, so yeah, we, heads up. We, we didn't we 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 didn't do one either. But yeah, also, it made me super super sad this year. I yeah. I uh, didn't have it's, um, the, it's one or two years of my life now. I didn't have a Christmas tree, and this was one of them. And I'm just like, hmm. Oh. Well, you still had the um, the uh, what was the fiber optic tree, right? We didn't even so put it up though. We didn't have time because oh. of Magfest. 
MacFest and Limited Run combo. It was a, it was, yeah, it was, and a then lot. setting up this podcast. Mm-hmm. There was a lot going on in December. Also, I was getting slammed with Etsy orders. Mm-hmm. So I was coming home every day after work and working until midnight to catch up on Etsy orders. And then I would get up in the morning and go to work all day and then do the same thing. Yeah. We, um, we just, we, so that's why I actually put my shop in on vacation mode because it was just getting too out of control. Mm. So yeah, like successful. we we usually do like really focus on the holidays, but we didn't have time at all this Christmas, and I think that kind of like that really killed my buzz. Yeah. Also, it was the first Christmas without my sister, um, so it kind of felt like this year was just like going through the motions of like let's just kind of get this over with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the upcoming years it will be better, but this was the first year, so it was very hard. Yeah, agreed. Gotcha. But uh, I definitely want to do more stuff. I think the only thing we really got like really ready for was Halloween. And we had the best and saddest Halloween party ever. It was just me, Brittany, Hutch, and Brian Rexrode. <laughs> it we was all the best. Got, it it was so sad awesome. At all. <laughs> we got so drunk and we got so – we just – what did we watch? Blade? Blade. We, we watched Blade. Blade. <laughs> And we were just laying on the floor drunk. Yeah, because we probably made paint cans. Oh no! What we did is we had uh, what we, we had made, punch. Like, punch. Yeah, we had punch, and we were playing games that forced us to I drink played, more punch. I played Mario sixty four, and every time I got a star, everyone had to take a drink, or we had to rotate. We all took drinks. Mm-hmm. Um, it was this champagne that or not champagne it was this punch that was super sweet yeah <laughs> didn't taste like there was any alcohol in it but it got you fucked up and we all were like on a sugar high we all had like the red kool-aid mustache <laughs> <laughs> cool. and, and, and we all ha- we all had our own like um costume yeah so i think you guys had me with the banana yeah <laughs> no 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 costume. i gave you master shake because i was the oh banana. yeah that's right <laughs> yeah that's better uh who had the banana? I was the banana. You were the banana. Yeah. And Rex Road was a monkey. He was a panda, I think. Oh, oh that's right. He was okay. a panda. And I just of had course a he would dress. have like face mask, <laughs> like face paint on. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went super easy. No, I was a. Uh, I felt like I had a hat on too, though, with the banana. I don't know. Costume. You can post a picture up. I have I a picture know. that you can okay, post cool. up of everybody playing Donkey Konga. <laughs> oh yeah, that was fun. But um yeah, so like we're we're definitely like about the holidays. Um we're still gonna try and celebrate Easter as much as we can here, even though it's just me and Brittany. I don't know, we might paint some eggs just yeah, for fun. fun. But um I, I love the holidays. I still love Easter even though I'm not religious at all. But the the tradition of it and the fun of it is you yeah. can still have it. Well, I, I think there's something to be said about traditions and the approach to holidays that's essentially just like, hey, this is a time where we have rituals and, and systems and processes. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, that's – Yeah. That's reasonable. That's nice and wholesome and great. Like, big ups. I think – I, I mean, there's a reason why it's not just a religious thing. I get like religion is why a lot of traditions sh- like form, but like um, I think traditions form mostly out of a social need. Oh, absolutely. More than anything else. Yeah. And I still need those things. I'm still a human being that needs to like do fun stuff and have like, oh, this is the time where we all agree that we're going to do a thing and it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I like I like that aspect of community. And um, we got like ten seconds, so let's just drop it there, uh, guys. Drop it, it there. Ow, bow, bow. <laughs> if you like this show, you can like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we're gonna put something on OnlyFans. I don't know what the fuck we're gonna put on there. Um, we're also on Discord. Go put, put jump a on our Discord of like cat butthole on OnlyFans. Yeah. Okay, I will. I'll do something for uh, Frank's I'll asshole get somewhere. Get band or something. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who gives a shit? It's only fans. It's, it's an interesting time to find out how that platform works and what does or doesn't work on it. Well, let's test it out, I guess. All right. No, so, what, what better way to see what's in the TOS by just seeing what sticks on the wall? Yeah, you've got to you've got to brute force the terms of service. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and with that, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Goodbye.